The Founding Pianos Collection is going to catalyse the creation of a centre. It's a centre of enthusiastic, like-minded individuals who are interested in teaching, research, and in the conservation, the maintenance, the restoration, and the acquisition of historical keyboard instruments. After I'd left school and was working, I saved up and bought a house in Gleam. There were many characters, and one of those characters was a chap known as Old Albert. I got to know him. One day when I was over there, he said to me, I've got a piano, would you like to buy the piano? There was a strange looking piano, like a desk. Do you mind if I open up and get the end key out and see what date it is? So I opened the lid right back, I lifted out the main board, there was the date. And the date was to the day 100 years before I was born. 2nd of January 1837, and I was the 2nd of January 1937. It has to be a sign. And obviously, I'm meant to buy it. So the collection grew. The collection has to be organised and taken care of exactly as I did. Going into a museum like it is just fills my heart with joy. The Founding Pianos collection blew my mind away. It is the largest private collection of pianos in the country, 140 pianos. The collection includes several pianos that are the only examples left in the world made by particular makers. And significantly, it also includes Australia's first piano, the piano that came with the first fleet in 1788. I'm at a university, the Ed of Cowan University, where we have a Vice-Chancellor who absolutely gets the significance of this and understands what a role such a collection can play in educative terms, research terms. This is one of the great treasures in the collection. In fact, it's, uh, it dates from 1766 or 1767. It's by the man that invented in England the so-called English square piano, uh, which is what this is. Um, it was modernised with these round corners around about the 1820s by a Mr. Botwright in Nottingham. Um, so obviously the people that owned it wanted to uh, look as if they could keep up with the Joneses by having a modern piano. This astonishing collection brings us into tandem with some of the great collections that are owned by tertiary institutions in the world. Therefore, we are extremely excited to be part of that very elite and special community of collectors. Having such a fantastic collection of instruments not only looks to the past, but it looks to the future. And it does that by linking with current technologies these new materials for the maintenance, restoration and conservation of historical keyboard instruments. We can make alternatives with contemporary substances. So we're hoping to lead the pack to meet the needs of restorers and conservatives worldwide. The variety of instruments that uh, we have here and the variety of sounds that are available on them has the ability to unite music communities throughout the world. It's very exciting to be a part of it. The most inspiring thing as a performer on these instruments, as someone who studies them and loves them, is seeing the look on students' faces, especially when they respond to the instrument and then going, wow, wow, that's different. Let's see what we can do with this thing. That's the creative spirit that I want to see every music student engaging with. Suddenly having these instruments available changes a student's life. The building that is proposed is still, of course, in the conceptual stage. We need a workshop space and we'd like to be able to see the activities in that workshop taking place. So the walls for that workshop will be glass. The people that come into the museum will see restoration being undertaken. It's is something that people usually don't get to see. There's not a single civilization anywhere in the history of the world that does not make music. In a sense, there's nothing like it. Music can change lives. It is one of the great gifts to us as human beings. As music is a gift to us, our hope is that the Founding Pianos Collection can be a gift to the cultural life of the world.